relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you're sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, Square Pimp Brigade on GYBB? Get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. And I am excited. Uh, first thing I'm most, I want to say this. The Patreon is up. That's the right. The Patreon is up finally, year after year. You guys have said that we changed your life. Now show me, God damn yes. it. Repay us for our help, for our gratitude. Shame. Your life has got to be worth at least twenty two dollars nine dollars at the very least so sign up for the patreon patreon what is it harry patreon patreon.com slash man school 202 and we're doing a lot of cool stuff up there first of all we're doing weekly bonus episodes for people we're also doing some specials where we watch along uh we watched uh dating around and 90 day fiance and you can uh, join us for that so we're going to be doing a lot of bonus content up there and yeah some other goodies too and uh you know and there's also you get if you know certain tiers you get to talk to us you know we also answer your listener mails first there's a lot of that's good it, stuff that's it i want to shout out the original the first 20 people that signed up i'm gonna shout them every time somebody signs up i'm gonna try and shout them out uh we got drew sears aj thank you so much drew sears thank you so much jervis thank you kelly franklin i appreciate you sadiq thank you yeah, kelly appreciate you Kenny, oh, Kenny, De, Kenny, <laughs> Kenny DeFay, I appreciate you too. Kenji Zakora, George Stenman, thank you again. Michael so Smith, Hard Style Max, uh, Omar Ellis, thank you, thank you. Ricardo, Michael K. Forbes, DJ Michael, Sneaker Freak. DJ Sneaker Freak. DJ I Sneaker love you. Freak. DJ Sneaker Freak. Ron Jones, Lydia Jaden, thank Freak, you, darling. Lydia. Noobs. One, Anthony Mann, Marvin Boyd, Ignacio Rodriguez, and Charlie Charles Murphy. Thank you so much. Yo, I appreciate y'all. All the new Patreons sign up. We're doing the bonus content back there. As we go, Harry, what's up? You ready to rock and roll? Because I'm oh, excited. I'm, I'm excited, too, and I'm excited. I'm energized. I'm excited because we have a very special guest on this show today. It's a special show today, Dante. And yeah, I, know, I know that we have said that. 441 times before but yeah. this time i this think time we, mean we mean it. it we mean it this time Dre, you ready to rock and roll what can, can we yeah. talk about, can we talk about your background today i don't know what this is kanye west as a crossing yeah, guard it's funny you know what i mean you just stop i feel like it might be necessary it might come up in the course of our conversation stop okay. point to it you feel now me? let me ask you andre what is what is kanye saying stop to what is he suggesting that should be hopefully stopped? Hopefully his campaign. Okay. Um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the, ins uh, the insanity. I don't really know what else, nigga. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you what stopped his meds. That's what stopped. <laughs> the meds probably because I don't too much trust in white coats. You know what I mean? Nigga yeah. probably need something else. You probably need to go to Jamaica. And stay need to go to the see. Like go you must go see the OBI woman. You know that. Are you I saying feel like that might work better? Kanye is black man. Come home. Are don't you saying that Kanye coats, needs to get bro. his groove back? Is that what you're suggesting? I'm saying be around niggas. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's also uh, Kanye's campaign slogan, people, which is very confusing. That is, that, is, that is his slogan now. Yeah. You know? Be so, around niggas, yo. Be around niggas. <laughs> so it's very confusing. But let's introduce the guest, somebody who is a, a good friend of mine. 
for many years at this point. My who, name's Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody who I, I met through wrestling in a weird way, but this man is phenomenal and always fun. I'm always so excited and happy to see him when we're, we're in the same space and a lot of fun, but uh, and also knowledgeable. Uh, the fabulous fashionista of New York City, my friend Darnell Mitchell, everybody. Give it up for Darnell Mitchell. Yeah, thanks for coming, Darnell. I'm sorry I was late, man. The traffic was crazy. I appreciate no worries. you coming out, though. Man, I'm so sorry. Um, Thank you for having me. I also want to point out, like, the Kanye West thing, hanging out with... He is hanging out with Armenian people, and Harry, you are Armenian, so it sounds like you're oh, also part of the problem. That's probably why he's out of his fucking mind. You know? Oh, yeah, I like Darnell. <laughs> Fuck you, Harry. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know what? I hung out with a lot of Armenian people growing up, and I, I lost my shit, too. You know, I should have more sympathy for uh, Kanye. Anytime somebody puts a dick in that in them Kardashians, they lose their fucking minds. Stay they really away. That is just their 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 pussies is a cavernous. Honestly, though, it doesn't even make sense to continue to fuck Kardashians now because the the doctors done made all the white women of yeah. like half the West Coast look like Kardashians. You can, well, you can just like you can just like any mall standing next to a pumpkin a spice a spa, starbucks these bitches all look the same they got the same doctor same titty same ass leave them kardashians alone nigga keep your pink roll oh, you, 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 you can date like an ethnic woman who just looks like that naturally <laughs> that's true so yeah without all those <laughs> but something is like the plastic though touche touche <laughs> here's see, the thing see, this, see that sarcasm of like fuck you white bitches yeah <laughs> that, see how he did that? <laughs> i have nothing against colonizers nothing against colonizers, colonizers. it's nothing fine. against i fuck a lot of white men so i can't i like have to be aware Listen, of myself but that isn't that reparations come on when you, you think know about it, it it is i mean and pay for my dinner Right, they've been fucking us forever. So why oh, really not? like that? The whole fuck a white person's reparations because that mean they good as money or they good as forty acres and a mule. Fuck that. Give me my shit. Your white pussy ain't worth that much. Yeah, that's true. That's true. How about, his, how about his white ass? How about that? Yeah, not even that. <laughs> fuck that too, nigga. Give me my money. Give Mitch his money. Mitch, where the nigga at? Tell him pay up. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving along. That went left. That went really left. Thank Listen, God. the point, I guess what we're saying is stop fucking the Kardashians because it's, yes. it's a curse. It's like being on the EA sports cover at this point, on the Madden sports cover. <laughs> You're just <laughs> cursed. That shit. Or the shit when it. they say Drake is at your game. For some reason, if Drake come to your game sitting courtside, you oh, go, yeah, oh, yeah, the Drake cursed. curse. Yeah, you lose, curse. you lose the playoff. Yeah, I heard that. Um, so, though, how, so, Harry, how, how'd you guys meet? Uh, well, we met uh, through. Now, Cat- I, said, I said that like a girlfriend. I was like, yeah. "So how you guys meet?" <laughs> <laughs> like we're a couple too. Um, yeah. Which, listen, if I swung that way, I'd go with Darnell. I mean, Good he's choice. fantastic. Um, I we met through Catalyst Wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. Darnell was like, uh, I you know, he was in the wrestling. He was like half a foot in the wrestling at the time. Now he's like all the way in, and rightfully, I'm I'm excited about it, and he'll tell you more about that, but. He was, a, you know, he w- he would do interviews and stuff for us, and he would host the podcast for a minute, and then, you know, uh, he was always amazingly dressed. And then I found out he had a like a professional background in mm-hmm. actually, you know, uh, you know, in fashion. And so I started doing a thing where because I was like I wanted to look my best, I would always ask his advice. Like right before I went on, I would be like, all right, I, I would bring like all my ties and uh, all and, his uh, pocket squares, all my pocket all squares. <laughs> And I go, which one? You know, you know, you have a great mind like that. Why not take advantage? Is that how you remember it? Yeah, exactly. I, uh, you know, I, I love wrestling. But like one of the things that I really love about wrestling is the connection between wrestling and fashion. Because mm-hmm. they're essentially the same fucking thing, right? So when you're watching wrestling. Wait, 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 wait. When you say they're essentially, how do you mean that? Because when you're, awesome. when I, when you see me. Like today, I'm very casual. This sweater is three hundred dollars, but you know, I'm very casual. <laughs> uh, I'm typically wearing a suit, and you automatically see me. You automatically have an impression of me because of the right. way I present myself, and that's right. wrestling, right? So when right. you come out of the the ring, you see Stone Cold Steve Austin come out with fucking tight ass blue jean shorts and right. a leather vest. You think this motherfucker is gonna whip somebody's ass? Right, and right. So that's speaks, the two between. Yeah, right, right, that's right. That's the correlation so between the two. You're putting that. Putting you're communicating something with your it dress, defines the character and what the character is, whoever the wrestler is. So now, let me ask you this: Have you ever designed for wrestlers? I don't know. Have you ever done that? Any 
So I'm not talented enough to design anything. Uh, what I do, so I'm a personal shopper. So I dress people for a living. So I've dressed so people. Stylist. You're a stylist. I'm a stylist. Yeah, I've dressed like, you know, um, billionaires. I've dressed like celebrities for like the Grammys, the Oscars. I've done like, I've done everything. And I worked for different companies and I do it freelance. Mm-hmm. Um, but for wrestling, what I try, what I've done a couple of times, uh, just cause I think wrestling needs it is, uh, what their character is outside of their gear in the ring because right. i think that you all you're always should be showcasing your character and who you are so what is I've that done you call harry what do they call it talk what's the terminology when you when you break character what do they call it break kayfabe. kayfabe or shooting when you shoot no 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 you there's a there's a wrestling terminology you told me that when somebody talks about the inner talk within the it's called shooting. Shooting. About the fourth or shooting yeah, yeah. shoot yeah you is it t- shooting it's a, yeah it's called a shoot like I you remember go, you saying another another it's either breaking kayfabe or kayfabe. It's, yeah, 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 kayfabe. yeah 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 that was yeah it. or talking they also call it you know a shoot so like a shoot is like legitimate like shoot fighting is where it comes from right and right. It, yeah so what is all of this? Breaking <laughs> cave <K-Fed>. So <laughs> <the> rest, <laughs> what is it? Hey, Drake, f- follow me because I'm gonna tell you because I know now. Um they uh so you know the character will have is like say Undertaker. Uh, he, he's never not supposed to be Undertaker. Like back even in the when day, he's especially at the, when yeah. he's at, in the, at the Costco, he's supposed to be the Undertaker. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then he when you just wear regular shit. Yeah, he can't wear yeah. crocs. You know what I mean? Right. He can't, can't, can't wear, wear basketball shorts. Well, it's, but that's like that's like the weird thing about wrestling now is because everyone has fucking social media. So the Undertaker is a perfect example. He has an Instagram. Like right, right. where like he's very Trump supportive. And like we've realized right. it. Yeah, we've realized yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh so but it's sort it's, of like yeah, it does. It's like he's an old white man from Texas. Of course it's he is. Un- uneducated white dudes. That's yeah. that's his eighty percent. That's it's exactly. not even just for uneducated because there's motherfuckers that graduated some type of dumbass. School yeah, but I'm I'm saying the biggest, the biggest, the his biggest group, biggest base, his biggest that. base that is, is uneducated, true. uneducated white men. That's where he's killing it. And right also, just because guy. you went to school doesn't mean that you're actually educated. True, you true, are exactly my point. That's, that's the true, answer. but that's but his that goes into a different category. So when you yep. go educated white men, uh, Biden is up, I think like 60%, something like that. 60, 36 or something like well, that. Just defining it by the demo. Yeah, is, by what, it, what it is. But, but I mean, definitely we, I've met, we've met plenty of assholes with uh, fucking we, master's degrees, master's degrees and don't, and can't put two sentences. I, I won't say can't put two sentences together, but it's more like a situation where you have this education you, and you have this inability to make your le- t- to take your lessons and make them practical, to have a practical uh, understanding of of how to apply those particular things. It's a funny thing is when I like so I was I was a male stripper before all of this, and when I looked at the business, the business is weird because it, it's stripping is kind of the same as 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 wrestling as well. It's like you create this character and yep. then you market this character. And depending on how you can't force it because it's like they have to genuinely like what you're doing. And, they, and it, it's a very organic thing. And so when I first looked at um, when, when I first started stripping, which was like 89, um, the, the the previous guys before me were all um they used to dress like wrestlers like they would have a full white body lace suit with the with the like, uh, ass cheeks out I'm with here for it. the barber beefcake that was all purple, with a yeah. purple a boa um they would do a zebra a uh, full length jacket with a purple fake Can fur coat just zoom in and out there uh Dante for a second just to fix the blur on your camera yeah. sorry i didn't want to interrupt the rant sorry but- but yeah, so they, they would dress up like. <laughs> I didn't I want mean, to interrupt the rants. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, it's, it's... So they they um, but it, it was a situation where there was these elaborate things, and when I came and I saw that what they weren't really doing was you know to understand attraction. The one thing about stripping is you have to understand how women perceive attraction, otherwise you don't make any money. So I noticed that this there was this fantasy thing, but there was no real connection to that to these characters and so we started dressing the guys in real 
clothes as opposed to like sequence, purple sequence and stuff like this, all this elaborate thing. And the whole game changed because, I mean, you talk about the 80s and the 90s, so everybody was wearing, you know, shoulder pads and stuff like that. But it was, it was everybody looked like Christopher Williams or Al Be Shaw or all the old school <laughs> R&B, <laughs> Bell Biv DeVoe, and they, and they started Keep doing sweat. that. And it, yeah, yeah, sweat, yeah. Keep sweat. And so all, all of it, you know, the, the, the clothing became more natural, so you, you would you try to make a, a direct connection. So I'm, I understand what you're saying about fashion being that thing. It's it's a it's a conversation. You're you're communicating certain things about you automatically. You know. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's quite. A, it's also really interesting to hear it in that sort of context about wrestling too, because like mm. it's uh, interesting how much wrestling and fashion uh, correlate with so many things that are happening in the world. Like that's right. that's a perfect example of like changing the idea of what stripping is uh right. with the times to make sure that you're you're actually the whole point is that you're trying to get someone to be interested in you so right. you have to change with the times uh so that's really fascinating uh yeah. also your friends sound amazing when they're putting their purple boas <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah that but, but it, it, that was the whole the, the previous order and then it, it kind of needed to well, change you know what that's similar to uh dante it, there was a time when wrestling in the wwe in the 80s it was very character driven. Everyone had to have a character, like literally to the point where some of the guys, like, you know, Jake the Snake had to carry a snake and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat had to carry a, a dragon. But even like further than that, there were guys like Duke a the dragon? Dumpster Drossy. He, like, he had a, like a iguana, like a like, huge... Like, I'm sorry, a kimono, oh, a kimono dragon. dragon. Kimono yeah, yeah. dragon, apologies. I don't know if uh, it was a kimono dragon, because those, don't those, they're poisonous or some shit. I think it was like Game was of Thrones. He came out yeah. with like three different Look, dragons on him. Yeah, it was crazy, yeah. <laughs> was and he had nuts. a dragon suit and shit. Like, and he's fucking but it was crazy. like the big boss man. He was a cop, so his, his name was the big boss man. And it was very character driven. But so then I they... keep forgetting John Andre. Andre didn't grow up in the the... The era, eighties. Yeah, yeah. Andre, Andre, how old are you, yeah, Andre? Was... Twenty-seven. Oh my God! Oh <laughs> 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 Lord! Okay. Oh got heat flashes. <laughs> I got dizzy. <laughs> Clutch got the vapors. Got the vapors. I got, the vapors. <laughs> I got a little. Oh, fuck 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 I'm a little for clap. <laughs> 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 but, but it's, it's but Dante, they changed they changed they had to change like that wasn't working anymore right and so they had to change it to more realistic characters i have but, a i have a, a theory about that yeah because if you think about it if you, you the the interesting thing is wrestling is so american or at least you know our version of it is so big you know i shouldn't say that because anywhere you go i just watched this special on the african wrestling they like yeah. do hardcore african wrestling oh, and they but they it's good but that's ancient. that was there before that's like but i mean i'm talking about time. no I'm, no i'm talking about re real like professional real. wrestling with no 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 not historical wrestling i know what you're oh, talking about like with, with luchador shit Yes, yeah. in Africa, oh, shit. and they do voodoo. <laughs> they, they, so there's voodoo in the, in the, in the scripts. In like, Africa, son, That's I'm, I'm gonna, it, nigga. Start, <laughs> this one wrestler has a he has a twin brother, and one of them fights, but the other one is like a voodoo princess prince. Oh, that's that so sounds awesome. awesome. When the dude, the dude's kicking his ass, all of a sudden the dude start doing some weird yeah. shit, and then his opponent freezes up, right? And he falls out, and they cover him over with a with a blanket, and when they lift it up, there's a pig, a pig runs out <laughs> into the village, out <laughs> the ring. Yo, it's it's lit. They have voodoo queens and all kinds of shit. But but my point being is those. Those images are so American. So there was a time when you had your Hulk Hogan drink your milk, say your prayers, do your push-ups, right. and then you had the bad guy, which was Black Jack Mulligan or, or Nikolai Volokhov when we had the, the Cold War. And with when Iron we, when Sheik. We had, with yeah. Iron Sheik when it was the Middle East. and then it Sergeant was, Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter was the was basically the boogaloo right now. So we it, oh, it, it was so Sergeant Slaughter would be planning to kidnap a governor and have her killed. That's so true. they they uh Sergeant Slaughter would be leading a militia of out of shape men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but what's funny is that it got to a point where I think even in, in film 
there was ne- there's no when you look at great film now there's never this guy's the good guy this guy's the bad guy all the great series and stuff that we watch is a, it's a human being who's trying to find yeah. the some They're a little more complicated balance. the characters are more complicated <laughs> so much more layered. And- so you, like i remember the 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 shield the cop was a dirtbag children on his wife he didn't was child support he was a drunk but then he 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 would catch a pedophile and then smash his face on on the grill in a, in a yes corner. chris hansen uh but yeah. it also it, it correlates to even the conversation that we we're having before we even recorded with uh-huh. harry and i about breaking bad breaking bad is a mm. perfect example of that yeah because walter yeah. white Layers. is a piece of shit but yeah. people love him it's like no nah, he killed the yeah, person but, but he wasn't a, the best a- but people love him but I think there's, but that's the, the layers of it is that here's a dude who did everything to take care of his family. But originally, then was it, originally, or then it was a situation where, okay, but I'm, I'm a bad motherfucker. I'm the, I'm, I want the problem. So it became this got, egotistical got, thing. Yeah. He got lost my in name, the sauce. Of Heisenberg. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, he, and, and you find any good film now has those dimensions. Sure. And yeah. so when that happened, I think wrestling changed, and now you had you. They love the Rock, but Rock, the Rock was supposed to be a, a crack dealer. At you know? first, yeah. So the you rock love was you're loving <laughs> that was. Yeah. yeah. Think, think about it. The the Versace shirts, the Is gold that's why chains. That's they call him the Rock because he's a crack the, rock. The Rock. <laughs> it might be. That was, that was part oh, of it, but yeah, he was shit. in the Nation of Domination, and they were kind of <laughs> technically a gang, even though it was also Nation. The Wayne Crack Rock Johnson. Yeah, and you, you would <laughs> think, here's, here's, here's the thing: you would think, but if you, you really think, smell what I'm cooking, I'm high as shit. If I can yeah. smell it, nigga. If you what? if you really think about it, uh, Stone Cold was the the re- the first Trump supporters. That was the stereotype. The oh, keep, give me my shit. guns. I'm going against the establishment. You know, uh, oh, you know, like that's a man. really good analogy, actually. Yeah, that's and that's why they love it. It's the same. So what I think what I think wrestling has always done is it's found what the real conflicts are, and sure. then. And then inserted them into into scripts at, with wrestling, you know. They no do doubt. that now. Did, I don't think they do that now. Uh, it's a little less now, but every once in a while they they still try to find whatever. But especially back then, it was whatever international conflict was going on. It was the Russian, so you know you'd have to have yeah. a Russian who was the enemy. You know, if it was well, right off. now they have retribution, which is a bunch of. Uh, wrestlers who are fighting against the establishment and they wear masks and they wear black hoodies and right, like so they just destroy yeah. everything and they're all it's people Antifa, of color now it's, of. it's anonymous or it's Antifa, literally right? it's literally antifa and yeah, like yeah. and the leader is, is a muslim man like right, right. Uh, yeah, you know yeah. it, it uh, a muslim who also in real life used to be a cop um uh, there's so many analogies to it and i don't think that's I, some people think it's a bad thing but like i think that like like all entertainment it should have some sort of correlation to what's happening right now it's, it's, it's good you want it to be relevant we as comics we hate comedy i mean some stuff is just funny but when you when you really go wow that's that was some shit right there like uh like billy bird billy bird did the Saturday latter Night did Live. Saturday Night live and his his opening Monologue. monologue yeah. It's so good. It's he really good. Whipping their ass. And then when he when he said, White women, you you bathed in the blood. <laughs> you blamed, you bathed in blood the blood money. money. I was mm-hmm. like, Oof. But I mean, you know, when it's relevant, I think it comes to a real place, which goes back to wh- what we talk about on the show is ter- in terms of relationships and a- a- attractiveness. There's an authenticity in wearing certain things that fit who you are and there's an incongruent when there's an incongruency you don't look right and so you as a stylist is looking at you're looking at people and you're feeling what they what they represent what you're trying to communicate but you're trying to enhance the aspects of their personality that you feel is what fits because when there's any inconsistency people mm, it's a weird thing um, about when I, when I talk about in, inconsistency, a lot of times it's being read as deceptiveness because mm. you, you, you're you not really decisive. So why are you not being decisive? Then you're deceptive and deceptive. It, it feels dangerous because it's unknown and un, and dangerous if you're is is unsafe and unsafe is 
I got to get the fuck I'm unattractive, right? Yep. Yeah, to especially the same for women. Unless she, she's an abusive woman and she's looking for this and she's keying into the fact that this motherfucker doesn't have real balance and that's what she's looking for, looking for that abuse because it, she can see those cues too. So it's interesting, you know, when you talk about designing and that, and, and that you're, create, you're communicating through garments and clothes, you know? Yeah, I, and I think that, um, I think for men, especially uh, heterosexual men, I think they sometimes don't realize how important that their presentation actually is and how much of a difference that this sort of confidence will, will actually have an effect on everything in their life. Um, right, right. When I typically, like, um, so like at a former job, you know, I was appointment-based and it was a really big company. And you would come in and, like, we would have a 20-minute conversation about who you were as a person. And the things I would ask you was, do you like sports? Do you, you know, what movies do you watch? What do you do in your free time? And they're like, why? And I'm like, because all of this is me figuring out who the fuck you are. Right. Because I, I look sickening. Oh, right. I look fabulous. But I don't want to dress you how I dress because I know how I dress. And I right. know what I want to represent. I want to make sure that I'm figuring out who you are and we work together to, fig- to um, construct a wardrobe that represents you in the correct way so that you can put your best foot forward uh, in a relationship and you can put your best foot forward when you're going out in the dating scene. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I've like, it's weird. Cause uh, I, I mean, I, you don't know who I, you don't know me, but I mean, I, I stay with a fur coat. Like I'll do a baby. I got a baby blue, a baby blue Fox three quarter Fox that I wear. And, but there's a level of confidence that you have to have in order to wear it. You know yes. what I mean? It, you, yes. you can't feel, un- I don't feel uncomfortable in it. Even if I've, I've come in and to come into a comedy club and they were like, and, they be, and I go, yeah, what's, what's the matter? Man, you got a coat. You got, and I'm, yeah, I know I have a coat. Yeah. And then it's like, well, but it's blue. And I, and I'm like, yeah. And then they just go, oh, okay, I guess, I guess he's comfortable with it. I guess we'll move on. You know? It's why I also don't, I don't really believe in the phrases of like fashion faux pas because I don't really think there is a fashion faux pas. You can wear whatever the fuck you want to wear. Yeah. I see people walking down the street with like bright orange shirts with yellow pants and, and bright red cowboy boots. And I go, man, I would never wear that. But right, like right. this motherfucker is so goddamn confident right, walking right. down the street. So he, therefore he looks great. Uh, how, I think a lot of fashion, people. Hmm. How fashion minded is it that, that people take those kind of risks, those kind of fashion risks. Like, you, I'm saying, so when you see somebody with, a, with orange pants and a yellow cowboy boots and, and a pink shirt and they're wearing this with a jacket and they're walking with that, isn't that the thing that where people go, man, like, yo, is this, is this a, it becomes a fashion statement. It almost, if people accept it, it actually becomes a standard. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I think that it's it also still correlates to what your personality is and who you are. Because if you are someone that's a little bit more subdued, I don't think that you're representing yourself if you're out here wearing that. Because that's not yeah. who you are. Yeah. Right, um, right. You know, I I don't. I know that in fashion, it's really important to like that you have fashion trends and things like that. Because everything does change. It's like this is in the moment right now. This is in the mm-hmm. moment. And I'm a big believer of classic things for everybody with your bursts of personality uh, infused into that. Because right. it's just, I, I don't see the point in dressing trendy because I think it's just counterproductive because eventually that trend will end. Um, but I, I, I try to tell people to not necessarily get their inspiration from other people they see. I don't mind saying like, hey, who's your what's your favorite movie right, character right. you know yeah, yeah. so yeah. we can get little hints of it it's always james bond always yeah. james bond everyone it's always, always says bond. everyone yeah. always says that They're like oh look like james bond favorite i was like movie? Well, well like movie inspiration for your fashion uh, they say james bond all the time and i'm like well honey like, who, you don't look like daniel craig like? but uh but we'll yeah. we'll take little bits of that and i'll figure out who you are based off of that and we'll work together I also so don't for, believe I don't believe in a partner being involved in that conversation. So if you no. come with a partner, I do make the partner stay away because you're going to listen to their influence over instead of feeling where you're at. That's yeah. interesting. And what's the I, worst? What's the worst sort of influence you've kind of seen with that? Uh, actually, with like somebody else influencing the fashion. Michael choice. Jackson. Yeah, dudes. I know a dude that was running around dressed like Michael Jackson. Worked at the library. 
and he dressed like <laughs> white socks, high waters. Like hey, do you have the gloves. new John Grisham novel? Hold on. And then he moonwalks away to, to go get it. <laughs> that would make the library so much more fun. Yeah. It really would, actually. Through the aisles. So uh, he had the, <laughs> every time he walks great. up those stairs skinny to get tie, the... He had the skinny the, tie. The, oh, this thing. <laughs> when he walks up the stairs, they light up one at a time on those little ladders to get oh, the book. Oh, that'd be you awesome. Get up the Barnes and Noble some more if a nigga was moonwalking or light upstairs. <laughs> How about no? If Come he, on now, you're I, not having fun. I want him to move. I want him to work in great papaya. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that nigga, moonwalking nigga working at? I'm pulling up. You go, yo, yo. Let me get. <laughs> let me get two francs with mustards and sauerkraut. <laughs> this nigga just moonwalk with the. <laughs> I don't think there's back. a job that a moonwalk would have make more. <laughs> interesting to watch exactly. yeah but check it out. if he could moonwalk backwards and do the must the mustard forward like iso like, yeah, i would tip him like, so much i ice honestly cold. would ice cold um but, but what's the worst you've seen darnell like uh influence from like a, a spouse or a, a partner oh like when they're shopping together yeah when the guys just say i don't know whatever she wants <laughs> yeah, oh and awful. then and then um I'm really good at it, like sort of diverting someone. And then I like give them something to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I give them homework to make them feel like yeah, they're a part of it. A side shirt or something. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Like, go pick some things out for me. And then I go, look, <laughs> that's not how this works. Like, I need you to, I need to know who you are. Like, you know, there, a lot of times I help guys who are super nerdy and, you know, they're significant other. It's like, yeah, oh, he wants to wear his comic book shirts. It's like, okay, who gives a shit, girl? Like, we can elevate that as much as possible because I love fucking comic book shirt. And then right. I'm wearing a goddamn comic book shirt. Who gives right. a shit? Like, that's who you are. And if you're not allowing, and if, if your content thing is my partner wears these things that show his interest and I don't like it, baby, do you like your partner? Right, right. Like, let them, let them figure out. There's a way to elevate everything, right? You know, I don't, like, let's not wear ratty tees and all that other stuff. Let's put a little bit more pride in yourself. Um, but we can elevate someone's personality very easily via their clothes. Uh, and I want you to make a decision. If you can't make a decision and your partner is the only one that's making decisions, I don't think you need me. Right. right I think you right. need to just partner. go shop with your partner. It's, I used to, you know, and I tell I people no all the time. I'm a big fan of saying, this is not for me. This mm. this communication is not for me because I'm going to make my money. But like my whole point is like th I really, really care about making people feel comfortable and confident and great. And I won't do that. And I can't do that if your partner is not allowing me to do so. So, that, so you, I guess what you're saying, there's a level of credibility. And I mean, so and this is this is interesting because all of these things are the things that make you attractive as a human being is the fact that you. So, you know, it's, it's interesting how people look at possessions and money and prestige as as the most important thing. But you have people who are filthy rich, have all the possessions in the world, and then they're putting a gun in their mouth because yes. they, they're unhappy. So it's an interesting thing when you look at um the one some of the things that are most that, that we all cherish as friends as as human beings is people who tell the truth people who have a level of integrity who just won't do anything for anybody at any time with no regard for anybody else and 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 to have empathy about what the person you're socially interacting with is going through and if you which we call ace it's authenticity credibility and and empathy and What's interesting about that is just the even your credibility is to say what I do, in essence, you're saying what I do as a stylist is is magnificent and it's worth this, and I'm not willing to put up with. I'm not willing to take any less than that. And I don't mean just the dollar amount, but even in terms of the cooperation, because if it's an artistic expression and you're giving off, you're trying to make art, because I mean, that's really what you're doing. You're taking this person and clothes and, and you're taking them a palette and you're, you're creating art. And in the context of that art, you want to be authentic. You want to be credible in that. And, and, and because you give a fuck about it, it you're allowed to charge more yep. because you go, I'm worth, I, because people don't always know what your worth is. You have to tell them what your worth is. Yep. And it's, it's an interesting thing that how that is a juxtaposition between the person that you're styling and the person and you personally. Like I, I say, it's like I'll do consultations with dudes and a guy, I'll see, I had a dude, you know, 
he was like trying to find, get his mother's, like he was looking for women like his mother so he could get his mother's love. Like, like he was, oh. you he know, ultimately. He was trying to find a girl. No, like no, no. Mom? I could just, well, okay. So I, you have to read between the lines. What it is, is here's a guy who keeps dating women just like his mom when he describes the okay, girl. The first way you said it was like he was searching for it. The second way it sounded like that's happenstance. Like he just so happens to keep finding that woman versus no, no, I want to. No, 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 but like I don't think mom. that is. I don't think that's still happenstance. I think that you make a deliberate choice to find right, right. people like, what, based off uh, of someone else. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a, you know, Dre, it's like a magnetic, It's a psychological thing. It's, you know, it's like, it's it's like we always, we always, we, well, it's an Oedipus thing too, but that that's not necessarily, but it's like, really? he he's going, he, so it, his, his, your relationship with women has a lot to do with your relationship with your mother. That makes so, sense. So, so, uh -oh. If you don't, so That's here's a, here's an interesting thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Me, me and, me <laughs> I got some thinking to do. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back, guys. Uh, I got some phone calls to make. <laughs> That's what we've been working on the last eight years, Harry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so that that relationship is how you relate to women. So if you a lot and now I mean you can as an as you become an adult you can go in different directions, but that is your relationship with women. So what happens is you start when you're you start to you want relationships and you, you're trying to get into a relationship you tend to because those relation that relationship feels the most natural between man between uh, the only uh, in, in terms of men and women you know that that feels natural so if your mom is abusive then you go out and you find abusive women um or you consistently find abusive women or the um, same way if you're if you all you saw was a lack of emotional or, or sort of physical affection between your mother and your father um right. you might not be a person that like likes physical affection because you never saw it you never knew right. that that was one of the love languages in the world right right see, absolutely right it all we're, we're modeling we're just modeling and and so this dude was i was talking to the dude and the, and the dude's Mom was, um, she had five different kids, four different baby fathers. She was, um, you know, all of a sudden he, she says, you know, she's heavy in the church now. And, and so I start putting the pieces together and the pieces of this is his mom was a while out. She was wild for the night. Right, I she kept knocking many nights, many many nights. She got <laughs> and I go, oh, I this go, is your starting mom. to sound familiar again. Are we <laughs> so still I, talking about my mom or what? No, no, <laughs> hey, mom, not, oh, mom. all right. But I was like, I was like, dog. I, I said, you know, you call me for the truth, and I was look, your mom's mom's was a hoe. That's what it is. Your mom's oh, was a hoe. hoe, and you gotta understand. So, but I'm saying, in every relationship that she's been in. She's never been able to pick a good man. Now, because his mom, the, the, the guy that his mom fell in love with on the real tip, the one, the one that out of the five that she really loved, he saw that she was crazy and, and left, right? And so he looks like his dad. And so she's abusive, overly abusive to him because she sees his dad. All of this is going on that he has no idea. And he's, you ain't this, you ain't never going to be nothing. In it. And I had to tell him, I said, you got to look at the source, where the source is coming from. And your mother has never picked a good man ever in her life. And the one that she did pick, which is your father, you, he left. So, um, she doesn't, she doesn't get know to how choose. To, yeah, she doesn't know she how doesn't to make those picks. She doesn't get to picks. tell you you ain't shit. Because she don't know what's good. And every she draft know choice she made went bust. Everything every single she... one of them. Every <laughs> signing, every trade, it all went bust. And oh. she still wants to be the general manager. <laughs> and and, and, and she's still Knicks. picking. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so you the go. bitch is she... James Dolan. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't get uh, she doesn't get to make that decision so it's interesting when you have when you understand what your value is you have to you have to literally do that work in yourself so that you well, can I'll do your job i know relating it to fashion and it's something that dante had to really like grind into me the weight thing really weighed in on weight no pun intended weighed on me <laughs> like funny. mentally and because, the pun uh, part too. And the pun part. <laughs> and the big pun part. Another pun. There we go. Um, I'm on a roll here. Uh, fat roll. There we go. Um, <laughs> I got a million of them. Pounds, I mean. Anyhow. Uh, my point is, like, that weighed on me heavily mentally. Like, I couldn't dress certain ways because... Oh, 
um, you know, I couldn't find clothes that fit right. So I kind of gave up on like looking really nice. And I, but you know, even as I started to lose weight and stuff, I still had that old mentality of like, you know, just wearing, just wearing stuff off the rack and, you know, like little Why don't things. you do what fat drug dealers do and just wear a full Nike tech suit and some Jordans? Bitches I love mean, that. those are expensive. See, even that was too much for me, Andre. <laughs> That was that was too fancy for me. I, uh, I didn't deserve that in my head. Is 140. Yeah, but the expensive. crazy thing, the crazy thing about that, though, is like when you are like a bigger size, you think that these, these decisions that you're making to buy things off the rack or whatever, or, or you need things that have more fabric or this or this or this. And all you really need to do is just figure out how your body lays and how certain things lay in your body. And you can look at like a million bucks. Oh sure, like, I mean even satin, my nigga. When I when I started getting <laughs> things tailored, like Dante showed me about getting things tailored, it changed my life in the sense of I felt much better about myself because I just buy pants and, and you just, just wear with, and yeah. you just wear them and they just don't. You go, why don't they look like? How come my pants don't look good? You know, I didn't even like what I was in, but you start learning little things about you know tapering the jeans and bringing them in and. Everybody's and, not in the green part of the weight to fat ratio. Right. <laughs> Fuck you, Dre. <laughs> Dre, would you take your take your slacks off the rack and fit them on? You right. Shit. What's that like, Dre? To just be able to buy something? You know, nah, it's always but at the thing one if, point that shit was complicated though. When I was like two forty. Nigga, being the H and M was stressful. I was looking in that bitch like, all right, I gotta go. Yeah, but when you two forty, <laughs> when you two forty, spend that motherfucker. When you two forty ripped, you know, it don't matter. You can it wear a French matter. apron, nigga. Right. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. Uh, but yeah, it's it's I, and one of the things, especially uh, gentlemen who are larger, the one thing they run away from, they run away from one word, and it's the fucking color. word slim. Oh. What oh, did you say? Okay. Yeah, I said color. Oh, color too. Let me yeah. wear black and let me wear big things, and it's like, yeah. oh, wait, I don't like, want to be seen. I don't want to be like, seen. They're going out. They're communicating. I don't want to be seen. And mm. so if I'm going to, I just want to, I'm going to slide into well, the back. I don't want it's people sort to of, notice. But it's also part of it. You think it's slimming, which it is technically slimming because there's less visual there. So yeah, it would be a lot. of. I own, yeah. I, I've been throwing away so much stuff. It's all black yep. that I've, I've gotten rid of. But it's like me. All my clothes is black. I just want to oh. sink into the background. Oh my God. Dante like is a uh, camouflage. I really want to bring Darnell out when you're back at the clubs and stuff to show him exactly what what you showed up. But you show up in the Gator boots and I, I'm I am des- I'm definitely part gay man, like yes. fashion <laughs> part gay man. I don't give a fuck. I will wear I will wear uh, pointy toe uh, python boots and a and a. I don't and think a that's why you. you Dante. That's because you Dominican, my nigga. Them fucking yeah. pointy boots. Son, that's I'm a really Dominican. good. Stop telling. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Dominican. <laughs> Tucked in polo shirt, like right, tight ass high waisted jeans. Washington. Uh, Steve, I, I, live Washington I live in Washington Heights. I live in Washington Heights. So I oh, see yeah, yeah. it every day. Hey, Demi low, motherfucker. Demi low. But them, <laughs> with them, with them motherfuckers, they will. They stay in some Gucci slippers. Yeah. They stay with their toes done. They stay. The motherfuckers be having the silk shirts on. They don't even get none of the beer sweat on their shirt. They just just outside drinking Modelos and Dos Equis. And uh, uh, they drinking, give a fuck, uh, though. smoking hookah. Donnell, what do you, what do you think? Like uh, for for guys out there trying to be better with their fashion, uh, who need who want to up their game. Let's say somebody wants to improve their fashion game. What are the tips you think would be would be helpful to them to start out? Uh, I think uh, it's about knowing your body and your your skin tone. Um, it's oh. one of the your <sighs> white people. I love you so much, uh, but there's a lot of <laughs> colors you can't wear, and like uh, it's why black and brown bodies are better because you can wear everything. But it's like realizing what washes you out and what actually right. makes you look better in photographs and in person. Uh, and to figure out what your strengths are and your weaknesses are. So there are right. certain parts of my body uh, that I get very self-conscious about, and I know it, and so I, I make sure I, I do certain elements to hide away from it. One being, I have, like, the longest arms in the world. So, like, while I'm small, 
things are cut very short for me. So right. I know that I have to spend a little extra money to get things tailored a little bit more, to maybe get custom shirts, things like that. Uh, right. Things that help my body size. Um, it's about knowing, you know, and say we were talking about, you know, uh, just getting things tailored in general for men who are larger. It's about right. realizing that slimming things down actually slims you down too as well. Right, right, right. You're making yourself look bigger uh, with all of this extra fabric. Um, you, do, you do got some long ass arms. I'm like, God damn. I thought I'm Freddy like Krueger was in the motherfucker. You know, oh my, I, I just box. rewatched it like the <laughs> other day. I have the longest fucking arms. Uh, it's so I can smack a bitch. But like, <laughs> I, but I know I have the longest arms and I like, and I'm Question. honest and I'm truthful to myself. Women are not very truthful to themselves when they, when they shop. It's very oh, hard. Most. Um, it's very hard, like because uh, I used to dress women as well. Uh, because I why just is it because they want to they they pick clothes to to look like what they want to perceive what they perceive yes. themselves as. Yes, right. Yes, and I I say, well, girl, you got hips. Like what the right? Like I'm not gonna I can't shave them off. Like need a, you need is, a gay friend to make you, you feel are. better. They, um, they will go get them shit shaved off too. What's your question, Dre? Before you lose your um, shit. It was about the clothes. Uh, knowing knowing the the like the designer or the the label, certain mm. clothing cut their shit differently from other ones, wouldn't they? So like, I f- yes. I figured that I noticed like if a uh, if something is a design by like a, a Japanese designer, it is no Smaller. chance. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or if it's a, like extra, <laughs> extra large is like, a medium. Um, uh, Armani shit. If it's like a, I'm not gonna fit. Or yeah, yeah. if it do fit, I'm gonna look like uh, some old freak nigga. I'm gonna look like I was trying to strip because it's so, <laughs> over tight. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a very it's a very good point because it's the reason why you can be a small in one brand and medium in another brand. Mm-hmm. So uh, guys try to shop very easily and they're sort of like, all right, well, I'm a 32, so I'm a 32 everywhere, and it's like, can't mm, do no, that. Not. No, you're uh, not. It depends on where your rise is for that particular trouser. And like when guys used to come to my old job and I sold, you know, every single, well, I guess it doesn't matter. Like I used to be, uh, because I don't work there anymore. I don't like seeing my job because people are fucking weird. Uh, I used to work at Bloomingdale's as a personal shopper as well for a little bit. And I sold thousands of vendors because I sold everything. Uh, but like when a guy's like, hey, you know, I'm a little self-conscious about this area. I'm a little bit bigger. My first instinct isn't to go to fucking theory. My first right, instinct right. is just to go to Ralph Lauren. Because right, it's right. a more American sized cut and it's going to be right. more generous That's in the places that he feels side. subconscious for. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, I remember, like, I'll remember knowing your was, shit is super uh, smart about knowing yeah. how every brand cuts. Having lost weight, I, I, I do, Rob I Lorraine, will never forget yeah. who was there and who Dan, I could fit and who. J. Crew, yeah. J. Crew, J. Crew cuts a little bit more. Uh, like, well, J. Crew gives you a little bit more of a, uh, a good range of like skinny too. Because I worked at J. Crew also as a personal shopper. Um, like, damn, nigga, do you know my whole life? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> um, the but, devil's a liar. <laughs> they do, they do give you a good range of, of sizes. I'm sorry, Harry. What were you saying about uh, Ralph Lauren? No, it's just I will. I'll. I won't forget. Uh, even as I start losing weight here. I won't forget who, uh, which stores did not give a fuck about the big man. Because H and M, H and M, you could go fuck yourself with your double XLs. I'm not for, I'm not gonna forget. But where's H and M? Where's H and M from, though? Uh, well, Sweden, right? Asia. Aren't they from it's Sweden? Swedish. Yeah, it's yeah. Swedish. Yeah, so they're yeah, all yeah. super fucking tall and thin. Yeah, like yeah. that's that's who gonna, that's, that's who the that body, company the body, is the, the body type is the body yeah. type. Years yeah. ago, they used to have. Um, this di- designer that made clothes for black men's asses was uh, <laughs> Willie Wear. Remember, Will- I don't know if you ever heard of Willie Wear. I know Willie Wear. So he was the first dude to cut pants for black men's asses, like where it was full in the pants and and big in the thighs and stuff like that. That's, That's also so uh, actually a really good point too, because it it uh, it connects to uh, to me saying that like uh, women, uh, you know, not being not dressing for their actual body size men right, right. are straight up so like when i would talk to men i'd be like yo do you have a big c and they're like what and i was like dude you got a big ass and he was like yeah, yeah man my ass is fucking huge and i have right. huge thighs and i'm like <laughs> the man will say it no problem and i'm like yeah, yeah. great because i need Cause to know that because yeah, yeah. now i need to get things that cater to your ass 
Like, <laughs> usually when I get those calls, I'm like, whoop wee, I can't wait to see. Like but, I, said, uh, <laughs> I got a wagon, all right? <laughs> and it's fine. It's fine. But, like, you need to know so that I can base that shit based off of that. Men will tell you in a heartbeat, like because yeah, they don't they, they don't they don't put as much value. At least they don't put as much value on on it as as you know as women do. You know what? What would you so, say, uh, hmm. for Darnell, for somebody like starting out? Like again, doesn't have a lot of money. You know, a lot of people. I know when I, I when I was trying to get my shit together, I did not exactly have a ton the of money. Fucking Gap and Old Navy. Like there we go. Don't shit on the Gap and Old Navy. Uh, the Gap uses for their denim, they use Japanese denim. Japanese denim is one of the best type of denims you can get, right? Because a lot of Japanese denim is also based off of American style looms from years ago. American looms, the way that we used to make jeans, are actually one of the most like heavy duty, durable types of cottons because they were made for people in the mines. And then we sold all those looms and then uh, we started mass manufacturing denim. And a lot of Japanese companies bought all the old American looms. So they're actually like, very well constructed. There's a reason why you could go to Uniqlo and a jean will fit the exact same as long as you take care of it properly mm. for 10 fucking years. But mm. the Gap uses a lot of Japanese denim uh, and their stuff is a little bit more durable. It's really inexpensive. There's always coupons. There's always on deals. Like you can find the most basic, simple, easy things from those two companies. And like you can get nice shirts for like $9. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. like, I, there's literally nothing wrong with that. Um, thrift shopping. Because people, my apologies. Thrift shopping, too. Thrift thrift, shopping. I was, that was the next thing I was going to say. Thrift shopping. Thrift shopping becomes harder because it's so many different designers. And if you don't know the designers, there's a lot of sort of like. Uh, variables on the side. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. variables there. But you can, I see people walk out at thrift shop. Like my favorite shirt is this beautiful Paul Smith white shirt with red roses all over it that I got in England that it was the last one in a thrift shop for 10 fucking pounds. Mm. It's my favorite shirt and yeah. it looks fantastic. And it was probably originally in the U S it's like, like 14 it's bucks. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. Like one in 1. 1.3, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So um, it's like, but like that shirt is literally like right. it's Paul Smith. So it was probably two hundred and fifty dollars. If you put a tailor on it, if you put a little tailor on it, a little stitch here and there to size it up with a tailor and get it tailored, it's you you won't. I mean, if people don't really look at. It's more the fit and the whole piece of it as opposed to what it is. It's, it's, it, I mean, I mean, you know, there's always label chases, but for you me, know, also uh, spend your I money know. on tailoring over the uh, amount of money that you spend in the clothes. Yeah. Absolutely. I've gotten great, like these deals at Marshall. I love Marshall's and TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx, great, great. If you could fit, yeah, you could get a pair of pants for whatever, 15 bucks, and maybe it costs you that same amount to get it tailored. Yeah. But you feel great. I'll never wear another yeah. pair of pants yeah. that's not tailored. Never yeah, in my I, I life. Broke, I broke Harry. Yeah. Fuck yeah. that. I'm going to break you, Andre soon. You I literally not, feel like... I've never had a problem with that. I don't know. But if but you... Like, it's it's like, I'm perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. When I no, did a problem, it was like, like H&M. Or I was trying to wear some like slim, super slim skateboard jeans. If I stay in my lane, I'm yeah, good. Yeah. If I go He's where right. I know where I fit in, I have no problem. Yeah. When I stay, I just do that. Keep it simple. Yo, Harry, you want to shut it down and then keep it, do another, or you want to do a straight? Uh, uh, I mean, if uh, if Darnell will stay with us, we could do. Uh, we can continue on the Patreon, guys. You got a hard out. Uh, I need to be out by seven. Oh, yeah, okay. So you know what? Let's shut this one down. We're gonna do listener mail on on Patreon, but I, I mean, I I think we can have you back at some point because this yeah, is so like so fucking this up. fascinating. There's a lot of man. stuff I wanted to talk it's about. So amazing, yeah. and thank I want to thank I'm sorry you, for the timing, man. I no, really would like time. to do another another half uh, on you at least <laughs> that's what most men say to me <laughs> <laughs> uh let me let me close let me close it out well Donna, uh, what do you want to what do you want to uh any social media handles you want to get out there or anything you want to promote uh so like yeah alice I, I want to promote uh people sending me money uh <laughs> no uh uh, yeah, you know, so uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is at Dinalicious. I do work for a specific company, uh, but I actually do consultations online. So like, uh, you know, with FaceTime because I ain't getting sick for not a soul. Um, and I'm here to like help people like figure out what they want and who they want to be. And uh, it's really, really easy. Um, but, you know, I think that uh, 
I think at the end of the day, especially when we talk about like dressing and people who help you is that uh, we utilize that word because I'm not a seller. I don't sell to a fucking single soul. I'm here to help you to make sure that you feel good every single fucking day. Uh, I am the uh, producer of a wrestling company called Uncanny Attractions. Um, you know, we talked a lot about wrestling earlier uh, in the podcast. And uh, for me, as a black queer person, uh, wrestling, I would say wrestling uh, doesn't like me as a person. And he gives a shit. I'm going to make it like me. Uh, and so our company uh, primarily hires uh, women, people of color, uh, queer people for all roles. Uh, so that's uncanny underscore track. We have merch coming out tomorrow. I'm really super excited about that. Um, so uh, on whatamaneuver.com. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys very, very much for having me. I feel so hey. smart with my books. I feel like Belle from Beauty and the <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you, Goldust. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, Harry, talk to me. Uh, you could check out uh, Catalyst Wrestling, the company I work for. Um, uh, all the stuff is on the Fight app and on YouTube and Gas Digital and all my stuff is at Harry Terjanian but uh, in addition to the Patreon I do want you guys to check out the Man School 202 YouTube channel where we're showing a lot of a lot of the videos are you can see the video of this show if you're listening to it on iTunes uh, and also the Man School 202 Instagram page Real Man School 202 uh, we're going to be doing some more stuff there too, but we always appreciate more followers because we're trying to grow this thing and get it to the next level and, and we're trying to help people. Yeah. Dre, talk to me. What's up, fuckers? Uh, <laughs> follow me on Andre D. Thompson on all the stuff. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, just keep in mind, everybody, the Patreon is up. It's Harry, what's the Patreon link? It's uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. And uh, again, we're going to be doing bonus episodes and bonus content. And right now, after this, we're going to go into a listener mail and we're going to use the questions uh, mostly from the people at Patreon who have uh, hit us up. They get primary access. There's a lot of great stuff over there. And uh, like we're gonna record listener mail right now after this is done, so you can um, go ahead so, and join us. So I mean, support us, please support the Patreon. It's really important so we can keep doing what we do. Um, Gybb, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. Yo, good one again. Peace out, y'all. Man School Two Hundred Two is created by Dante Nero, hosted by. Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.